Hi guys, it is Dom here from Soundsphere. I had the opportunity uh, yesterday to catch up with Richard Patrick from Filter to talk about his career, the legacy of Filter songs, his time in Nine Inch Nails, the new album, and so much more. So uh, check this out. Thank you for your support. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Right, so uh, Rich, it has been a very long time since I last spoke to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Filter has uh, obviously toured around the world for many, many years now. You do have a new record coming, uh, which is very exciting, and some potential uh, UK dates in the next few years. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But the first mm -hmm. question I wanted to ask you, uh, and I've always wanted to ask you this, because I think you will have a really interesting um, perspective on it, is... Uh, your definition of success and how that's changed over the years. Could you tell me, Richard Patrick, in 2023, how you define success and what it means to you, please? Success is being healthy and happy. Okay. And um, when it comes to my career, uh, it's it's basically as long as I'm allowed to make records and tour and offer new music to the world, I'm a happy man. And, um, you know, I've taken on fil film scoring and uh, I've even started like different projects that are coming out in the next year. There's a new techno uh, thing that I've started. Uh, that's me DJing. And uh, I have another band that I'm working on called The Place to Kill um, with uh, Jim Laveau. And, um, it's really cool. It's like a uh, super heavy industrial. It's called, um, um, I can't remember what we called it, but it, it, as far as the, the music, it's like trip trap. It's industrial trap metal. That's what okay. it is. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I, the new filter record is coming out in August and we've already dropped two new songs uh, from it. One was called uh, For the Beaten. Mm -hmm. Another one was called uh, Face Down. Yeah. And Face Down came out a couple of weeks, like about a week ago. And we're just continuing to just um, press forward. Yeah, I mean, that that moves us on nicely to my next question, really, because obviously, you know, Face Down has just come out. Um, you know, you, you guys have released sort of a, a slew of singles over the last few years, really. And I, and I kind of wanted yeah. to ask you, about face down because it is fresh in people's mind. Is that totally mm. representative, that heaviness and that rawness, totally representative of where you're going with this new record? And I believe it's gone through a couple of it's, names. Name changes the record, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. The, the the I used to want to call the record, the, they got us right where they want us at each other's throats. I, I, I was calling the record, they got us right where they want us, comma, at each other's throats. And mm. that was just too long. I thought it was kind of funny because it was long, but then I just realized it's it's just too much to say. So I'm calling the record the algorithm. Okay. All right. The algorithm. And, so, yeah. And that's indicative of just where we are as a species on the planet. And uh, you know, the whole the whole AI and everything and just, you know, where we are digitally in the in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that that's, you know, uh, it feels like and this is my perception, really, Rich. You'll have to correct me if, I, if I'm wrong. Um, you know, you feel like uh, Filter, for the last many, many years, it feels like the records have been around themes of discontent and real real anger at the world around you and around, I guess, the people close to you, from everything from title of record through to Trouble with Angels and beyond. Um, I wonder, <laughs> this is another deep question, I suppose. Have you ever been content? With you, I've, I, you know, I know you're content with yourself now, but from a musical standpoint, are you ever content, or do you feel the need to sort of yeah. consistently argue against the system, the algorithm, as you put it? Um, I, there are some songs that are totally about peace and love, and um, you know, uh, I even reference the Beatles in Face Down. I say you know, only love can see us through, just like them Beatles say. Um, you know, it's like Bono says. Bono says love is stronger than hate. And he's right, you know. Um, uh, you know, my my 
my compadre Trent Reznor and I, when we were young, we heard positive messages and we we appreciated those. But at the same time, we really loved like when people spoke out, like Al Jorgensen mm. um, and Nyda Goger from Skinny Puppy. Uh, they truly uh, wrote what they knew. You know what I mean? And uh, as much as I love being on the planet and I feel grateful for for the, the human experience, mm -hmm. I still think there's work to be done. And I think that we should work together and try and listen to each other. And, uh, and, and also I have a couple of points, uh, you know, that I'd like to make, you know, in my music, you know, I, I mean, my first song was about a guy that held a press conference and, and ended his life. And, um, you know, it's, it's gotta be examined. The, the, the dark side of human existence needs to be examined. Mm. Mm. Do, do you find it you, how do you put yourself in that headspace then now as someone that is making film scores and doing things that you obviously love you know and again you 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 appear to be in a in a in a much better space than you were in those first records and you know in that time yeah. in your life how do you put yourself into that space to get angry at the world around you to 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 make these records that mean so much to a lot of disenfranchised people a lot of the time um I, I, you know, I save it, you know, like, um, I, I, I see where, uh, you know, U.S. politics is going, uh, geopolitical stuff, uh, Vladimir Putin, yeah. um, you know, what he's doing to Ukraine right now. It's, it's injustice is there. And like, mm -hmm. I'd rather kind of talk about that and talk about like how we should literally try and work together and be uh, one species on the planet. Um, I, just like the Beatles say. And uh, I have to, I, I, it's usually, you know, it's really interesting is I, when the music is written, cause I write the music first, mm -hmm. when the music is written, it just flows. The lyrics just pop out of me. And um, you know, for face down, I started messing around with a bass line that I, I was working on a side chain pumping effect in the bass line mm -hmm. uh, using a compressor mm. and came, it came up quickly with the, the chord pattern, the, the bass line. And then within like five or 10 minutes, I was singing over it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just trying to write from a perspective of like, I know some stuff. Maybe I can share it to people and maybe they'll agree and maybe they can learn from it mm. kind of mm. standpoint. And uh, I hope to be inspirational and, yeah. you know. Uh, ab absolutely, man. And that, that, that moves me on to another bit of a word association question because, and this is where you could tell I'm a fan. So again, just bear with me on this one and you can correct me if, if, if you feel differently, but like I'm a huge Nine Inch Nails fan, right? I'm a big fan. I grew up on that music, but I also mm -hmm. grew up on your music, right? And I right. always had an issue with you being, and I understand why, I understand you were always intrinsically linked with Nine Inch Nails, even though you were writing mm -hmm. these incredible sort of pop record, you know, pop record, rock records, but with pop hooks. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and you obviously built such a legacy for yourself. So mm -hmm. with that in mind, Rich, like, what what do you consider you to be to be your legacy? You mentioned obviously there, you know, inspiring people, um, you know, you know, building material that motivates people on a political mm. level, emotional level, etc. But you know, how do you see your legacy? Because again, I, I, I'm I am always like, Filter was yeah okay, Nine Inch Nails was as a part of it, but Filter was its was its own own thing, and you mm. know, its own you know, it has impacted so many people on so many levels. Uh, and I'm going to stop being a fan now and leave the uh, leave the uh, answer to yeah. you. Yeah, the the legacy is the songs. Yeah, you know the legacy is the eight records that I have so mm. far, the soundtrack work I've done, mm -hmm. um, the movies I've made. Mm -hmm. It's it's all in the work, mm. you know. And um, I I hope to be looked at as a decent guy that had his had issues but overcame them. Mm. And um, but my legacy is definitely it's these it's these it's the music you know mm. it's it's the work you know and mm. so 
I just, every day I wake up and I have ideas, you know, and um, I'm surrounded by a really great bunch of people Mm. uh that that look after me and care for me and, mm. and appreciate me and you know don't don't let my head get too big and <laughs> you know yeah. but they're sweet people and they take care of me and all they want to do is win mm. you know everybody around me wants to win from my mm. managers to my bass player to my guitar player my drummer you know they're mm. just people that love me and want to be successful with me mm. and so i just appreciate that you know mm. i really really appreciate that and I also appreciate where I come from. You know, I came from Nine Inch Nails. Mm. And I, I'm really, really glad to say that Trent and I are good friends. <laughs> you know, we've, we've, sure, we've had our issues and stuff. And I mean, I, I did quit. You know, I quit Nine Inch Nails. And, and he wasn't happy about it. And um, I wasn't happy about it either. But I had to step out on my own to see if I could do this thing mm. called Filter. Mm. And... Um, I'm grateful to all the friends I have. And I mean, I was just hanging out with Chad Gray from Mudvayne yesterday. Yeah. And like, and the thing that Chad and I have in common is the music that we mm. both make, you know, it's, Hey Chad, I, I know you mm. because of your music, you mm. know me because of my, you know, like we just mm. knew each other, we, mm. you know, like we, 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 we've gone back in time. Like we've, I've known him for 15 or 20 years, but it's always great to see Chad because he's, he's such an amazing singer yes. and you yeah. know what I mean? And so I, I, I have, uh, uh, I just have so many great things in my life and, and, you know, I hope to be honestly when, you know, if there's a funeral in my life, you know, when, when there's a funeral, I hope that I have a lot of friends that show up to it because yeah. I think that's the best part is, you know, success, there's money, there's, you know, you can have yeah. houses and cars and stuff. But like that stuff is fleeting. It's it's your friendships. It's how many mm. friends you have on the planet that that really matter. Mm. I, I love that, Rich. And I just want to add a couple more questions, four or five, before we finish up. Now, um, you mentioned you you know how it is easy to get an ego, you know, in 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 your line of work. You know, having come mm -hmm. from where you've come from and the reputation of Nin and an old filter again as a standalone project in your own work in film scores, your music can be heard in varying capacities, again, being able to tour the world, etc. You know, mm -hmm. you, is it your family, friends that keep that ego in check? Do you, or do you, do you, do you struggle to do that at times? Or have you ever no, struggled to I, do that? I, we call it getting cocky. Okay. okay. My wife, my wife and I have a very simple understanding, like don't get cocky. Okay. Like be appreciative and work hard and it, it's, you know, this, so much of this industry is luck, mm -hmm. but it's luck met with preparation. Mm. You have to be ready for it. And um, uh, so, you know, my wife and I just have this simple motto, just don't get cocky. It's just like Han Solo says to Luke Skywalker, great kid, don't get cocky, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good lesson. And that's why I asked the question in case anybody listens mm -hmm. or watches this and, and respects your work and just uh, he needs that reminder. I think it's good. Um, I, I wanted to touch on something that I've noticed you reference quite a lot in interviews, uh, especially when it comes to your music throughout history, is, is that love of industrial music and that connection with industrial music. Uh, other people mm -hmm. shy away from that label, but the bands that you grew up with, of course, you know, your skinny puppies, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, are very, very linked to industrial, but people have used it perhaps in the wrong ways over the years. And, and I wonder, you know, what does industrial mean to you now? How, how, how proud are you of that label? Because it seems like to, certainly in yeah. popular culture, you would be, and this might be a little bit of a, you know, I, I would say you were the most popular industrial band that's still doing like mm -hmm. proper industrial and saying it's weird. Yeah. Saying you're industrial. You know what I mean? It's weird because the, 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 the band filter, I see it almost more as like an alternative kind of band mm -hmm. uh, underneath the alternative label. And I kind of take from grunge, I, you know, drop D guitar tuning from like Soundgarden and, and Mudhoney and mm. uh, Helmet. And and uh, then there's the drum machine from Ministry and like the drum programming from Ministry because we didn't know any drummers at the time we got started. And then there's the melodic sense of like the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. Mm. You know, it's just it's, to have a hard hitting chorus. Every song is really important to me. 
and songwriting, which is where Trent came in. You know, mm-hmm. Trent was like, let's write songs. Let's not just have a cool groove for five minutes and, you know, exhaust everybody through, you know, five minutes of a cool groove. Let's, let's write songs. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, uh, I, 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 I'm appreciative that people think we're industrial. Sometimes I listen to our music, like take a picture is kind of a pop song. It's a pop song. You know song. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, so I, 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 I hope that I'm, I'm hope that I'm bring being true to the genre by pressing the boundaries of mm-hmm. what is industrial or alternative or, or hard rock or whatever they're calling us this week. <laughs> yeah. It changes a lot. And I appreciate your mm-hmm. answer on that, Rich. Uh, three more mm-hmm. to wind up promo questions. Uh, what, what I, uh, I know is you're about to go on a tour, uh, uh, the freaks on parade uh, with Rob Zombie, yeah. Alex Cooper and ministry who you referenced there. Bands mm-hmm. that defined an era again, alongside yourselves, uh, you know, your nins and, and are, are also in there. But of course, you are very much in that conversation alongside Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, and Ministry. So, what does that mean to you to be on that tour with these bands? Uh, you know, with, who have defined, I guess, two thousands, nineties, yeah, rock and metal, really. And uh, well, even going back to the seventies with Alice Cooper. Mm. It's it's an honor and a privilege. And and, um, uh, you know, Rob and I go way back to 1996 when we toured together uh, with White Zombie and um, Alice Cooper. I did a benefit with him uh, uh, for during during Christmas uh, for his charity. Um, And I met him and he's a very sweet man, very cool person. And, you know, you, you always know these guys that that have been around for a long time they're really cool like mm-hmm. the reason why alice cooper is still loved by so many people is because he's cool <laughs> he's a good guy he's yeah. he's like a sweet person you know what i mean mm-hmm. and uh, you know you you know rumors have it that when you meet keith richards or when you meet mick jagger like they're the coolest people in the world like they're the sweetest cool. they're they're not headstrong they're they're not cocky. They're, they're just good people. Same with like Bono, Mm -hmm. you know, Chino from the Deftones, uh, Adam Jones, Danny Carey from Tool, you know, all the guys that I know are are just decent people. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's why I think so many of, of like Alice Cooper and Rob Zombie and including Al Jorgensen, very sweet guy, you know, uh, I think that's why they have longevity is because they're good people at heart and their mm. music stands the test of time. Mm. Absolutely. And, and again, you know, putting yourself in that, you know, lumping yourself in that there is good because you're talking about being a good person. Fundamentally, the mm-hmm. music is, is a huge part of what you do, a huge part of your life. But mm. fundamentally what I've heard this interview is you're concentrating alongside that on being a, a good dude, mm-hmm. which is, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a great message, you know? Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've had my own, I've had spells where I've been extremely cocky and Mm I, you know, I've had my own like learning curves on uh, in life. And from what I gather, if you, if you really want to just enjoy your life and if you just want to have a lot of friends, you just be nice, you just be a sweet person. And and, uh, I I think that's kind of where I'm at. Like, you know, that's, that's where I'm at in my life. I love it, man. I love that for you. I really do. A um, couple more Thank then. You. Yeah, you, you've got, uh, I believe it's called California Screaming. It's a streaming uh, event you've got coming up in June. Uh, yeah, with Hitcore. Got, yeah, which is exciting. Yeah, I was just about to reference Hitcore. Uh, in the press release, it says you've got special guests. I think it's really cool that you're doing that, you know, the, the live streaming thing. I think it's great for mm-hmm. uh, fans all over the place that can't necessarily get to shows. I still think it has its mm-hmm. place in the world, uh, live streaming uh, gigs. So um, what is that? What are you excited? You know, how are you? How excited are you for it? And to, to well, I us any plans. So Hitcore did a streaming event with Ministry last year, and it was amazing. And I was right there, front and center. And uh, if you look at the video, I'm like right behind the camera. And uh, there was probably thirty or forty people packed into the studio, and then there's camera crew everywhere. And um, it just looked like a really amazing way to kind of get your music across, especially in this new day and age where 
we've had pandemics and there's all kinds of reasons why people can't come and see a inflation, mm. whatever it is. Mm. So this is like a great way to have filter and you can watch the concert anytime you want. And um, this is a great way to say, and we're going to try and play as many songs as they'll let us because we're really into trying to record as much for prosperity as we can. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. I can't wait to see that, man. Absolutely. Uh, in the press release, it was hinted at least uh, maybe 2024 that you'll be coming back over here to the UK. Uh, yeah. Have you thought about it? Is that something you're very keen to do? We, uh, tell me about it. Yeah, we we love the UK. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in Filter in the United States, and it's been very encouraging. And so I think promoters in the UK and Europe are very interested in having us back because um, it, there's been kind of a resurgence in, in filter. And um, I, I think it's fairly, it's probably because Trent invited me back to nine inch nails and we, we had so much fun that night there, but there's this new uh, insurgence behind like there's this new um, reaction to, to, to filter. So we're, we're just on. We're just honored, and we love Europe. I, I what I want to do is I want to go to Europe and the UK, and have my family come and meet me like halfway through the tour, so they can see the beauty of the UK and um, Germany and Spain and you know France and um, hopefully the Ukraine. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Do Do you have do you Do you have any lovely memories? Because you've been to places that not a lot of, you know, you've done Leeds Festival, you've done all that stuff. Not a lot of bands get can, can say that, especially international bands. Do you have any particularly great memories in, in the UK? Oh, absolutely. I think probably one of the best memories was when we played the Astoria. Yeah. Oh, wow. And we it. sold out the Astoria and uh, we played and it was a great concert. Mm. It was a, it was great. But the the fans, the fans are amazing in, in the UK and uh, uh, we're just honored and blessed to be, you know, in everywhere, uh, France, England, uh, I mean, uh, Germany, um, Italy, um, we've really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, I can't wait to come back. Oh man, we're, we're so excited to have you. I can't wait to see you. Uh, and to finish off then, last question. This is where we check, uh, Rich, if I've done my job properly. Is there anything that I've missed that you would like to promote as we finish up today? No, I think that's it. We got a new record coming out. It's called The Algorithm. It's going to be dropping out in August. Fantastic. Oh, Rich, I really appreciate your time. Look forward to doing this again and, soon. And talk to your local promoters and tell them you want to see Filter. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm already on it, Killer. mate. I'm already on, already on it. Thank awesome. you for your time. Appreciate it, Rich. Thank you. I appreciate you having me.